Welcome to 10.6, Segment Relationships in Circles. So now we're not talking so much about the angles. We are talking about the distances of the segments. So in the first example here, uh, when you have the plus sign in, in the middle here, the angles in the middle, um, you take each segment of the bigger segment, so ED and EC, you multiply those together. And you take AE and EB, and you multiply those together, and they should be equal. All right, and then the second one we have, uh, it's the same type of concept, except now you're going to do a part to the whole. So, like, let's do this one first, and then we'll we'll look at the middle one. So, if you notice, EA and EB, EA times EB, so EA times E to B. So, you have this part of the segment times the whole segment. And this is when you have your, your vertex on the outside. So this is on the inside, and these two are on the outside. On the outside, you take the part times the whole. So this would be EC is the part of the segment times the whole segment ED. So now let's go look at the second one. So EC, again, the part of the segment times the whole segment. But if you look at this tangent here, it's not a secant. This is a secant. There is no part, but it's just a whole. So the part of the segment would be EA, just like you have here times the whole segment, and the whole ha segment happens to be the same thing. So EA times EA is going to be EA squared. All right, let's do some problems. So now what we want to do is notice what we have. Both of these, the um, vertex is on the inside. So we take each of the parts multiplied together. All right, so remember you take uh, the whole thing here, each part, 12 and X, and multiply them together. So that's 12X. And that's supposed to equal the other two parts multiplied together for this whole segment. And that's 10 times 6. So 12x equals 60. Divide off the 12, and x equals 5. All right, number 2, again, it's the same thing. And now you got to be very careful. So you have this part, x minus 3, that's a group of things, times the other part, 9. And that's supposed to equal those two parts multiplied together, 10 times 18. So since you have a group, you need to distribute. So that's 9x minus 27 equals 180. Add 27 to both sides. And you get 9x equals 207. And now we divide by 9. And x equals uh, 223. Okay, let's move on. Number three, again, these are the same type of thing, except they get a little more complex. So you have x times the group of x plus 8 equal to 6 times 8. So, again, you got to distribute x squared plus 8x equals 48. And any time you see an x squared plus another x, it looks like you're going to have a trinomial, but there, there's an equal sign in between. So we need to move the 48 to the left side. So let's subtract 48. From both sides, we have x squared plus 8x. Now, 48 doesn't have an x, so it's by itself. And so now we need to do factoring. And x and x go here. Factors of 48, they give me 8. Well, 1 and 48 don't. 2 and 24 don't. 3 and 16 don't. We're getting closer. The difference there is 9. Or, excuse me, 13. And 4 and 12, there's a difference of uh, 8. That could, be, that could work, and we have 6 and 8 give us uh, 48 as well. And that won't give us a distance of 8. So 4 and 12 go here. Now the question is, how do they go together? When we multiply them, we're supposed to get a negative. So one of these must be a negative, one must be a positive. And when we add the two together, 4 and 12, we're supposed to get a positive 8. So that means 12 must be bigger. T positive 12 minus 4 gives me a positive 8. And a negative 4 times a positive 12 gives me a negative 48. So that's how you do that. And so now either x minus 4 equals 0 or x plus 12 equals 0. So the answer is we add 4 and x equals 4. We subtract 12. It could be negative 12 for our answer. So those are your two possibilities. But it really can't be negative 12. If you put negative 12 in for x, that means this distance is negative, and distance can't be negative. So the true answer is really 4. So you do have to check these. All right, again, number 4, 2x times 12 
equals a group x plus 3 times 15. So this is 24x on the left, 15x plus 45. Subtract 15x, and that's 9x equals 45. Divide off the 9, x equals 5. And that's your answer. Number 5, now this is on the outside, so you have to take the part times the whole. And the part times the whole. So 6 times 16, you have to add that together, that's 16. And this whole part is going to be x plus 8. So the part times the whole of x plus 8 is equal to the part times the whole, 6 times 16. So 6 times 16 uh, is 96. And then you distribute 8x plus 64. Um, 6 times 16 again is 96. Yeah. So minus 64. That's going to be 32 equals 8x. Divide off the 8. And x equals 4. Okay. You can plug it back in. 8 times uh, 8. Let's see. This is where I'm looking at. 4 plus 8 is 12. 8 times 12 is 96. And 6 times 16 is 96. So it worked. Number six, the part times the whole piece, 12, equals the part times the whole piece, x plus 4 is the whole piece. You're adding the segments together. So that's 60, this is x squared, and that's 4x. So again, uh, looks like we have a trinomial, let's move the 60 over, get x squared plus 4x minus 60. So factors of 60, they'll give me a positive 4. 1 and 60 won't. 2 and 30 won't. Uh, 3 and 20 won't. We're getting closer. 4 and 15. 5 and 12. How about 6 and 10? There you go. And 7 and 8 won't work. So this is going to be x and x. And we want 6 and 10. So how do we get a positive 4 from 6 and 10? It would be positive 10 minus 6. And a negative 6 times a positive 10 gives me a negative 60. So you have to add them and also multiply them. So x minus 6 is equal to 0, or x plus 10 is equal to 0. Add 6, so x is either 6 or negative 10. So can x be negative? So if we take the negative up there, no, x can't be negative. So our answer should be 6. Okay, now the same thing. These get a little bit harder. So 4, the part times the whole, 9, is equal to the part, uh, let's see here, this part here, x minus 2, and the whole part. Okay, so now we have to add those together. Okay, so you have to take x minus 2 plus uh, the x plus 4. Okay, so what is that? That's 2x and a negative 2 and 4 is a positive 2. So we're taking x minus 2, which is the part, times the whole 2x plus 2. So now we have to distribute. That's 2x squared plus 2x minus 4x minus 4, and that equals 36. So again, we have an x squared. Uh, we'll continue down here. We're going to have to move the 36 over. 2x squared, and this is right here, negative 2x minus 4. So let's subtract 36. And we get 0 equals 2x squared minus 2x minus 40. Now you could factor this um, into binomials, but let's factor a 2 out first. We get x squared minus x minus 20. And anytime this is a 1 here in front of your x squared, that makes this a lot easier to factor. X's go here, and then factors a 20 that will give me a negative 1. So 1 and 20, nope, 2 and 10, nope, 3 doesn't go into 20. How about 4? 4 and 5, and there you go. You close the gap. 4 to 5, there's nothing else to check. And um, now how does that give me a negative 1? So you have 4 and 5. If 5 was negative and x was positive, we get a negative 1 when we add. 
and when we multiply we get a negative 20. Okay, so what is our answer? Oops. So the 2 doesn't matter here. Uh, we could divide the whole side by 2 and anything over 2 is still 0. So we still have this. Okay, so we really want to know is either x plus 4 equal to 0 or x minus 5 is equal to 0. So as we subtract the 4 over, x is either negative 4 or we add 5, positive 5. So can x be negative? If I just plug in negative 4 right there, I still get a negative. So negative 4 isn't going to work. Positive 5 is the answer. Okay, let's do number 8. Same type of thing. We're on the outside here. So the part, x, times the whole piece here. Now it tells you the whole piece is 45. Don't take x plus 45. This is the whole piece, 45. So they're trying to trick you. And the part of the other one is 27 times the whole piece, which they tell you is 50. So they're trying to trick you into getting given something that isn't right. So 27 times 50 is going to give you 1350. And then we divide off the 45 and x is equal to 30. Okay, cool. Next problem. Find the value of x. Again, it's the same thing. We're on the outside here. So we have the part, 9, times the whole piece, 16, equals the part, x, times the whole thing, which is still x. So now we have x squared equals 9 times 16, and that gives you 144. To get rid of the 2, oh, that is a square, we take the square root. Square root of 144 is plus or minus 12, except, again, x is a distance here. It can't be negative. On the other problem, you were adding and subtracting things to it. So there are times where x can be negative, but if x is by itself, that can't be negative. Okay, so number 10, again, we have the part, 24, times the whole piece, 24. And on the other one, we have the part, 12 times the whole piece, which is x plus 12. So you have to distribute there. That's 12x plus 144. And 24 times 24 is going to give you 576. So subtract five, uh, 144 from 576. We get 432. And then we're going to divide off the 12. So 432 divided by 12 is going to give you 36. Number 11, the part times the whole piece here, which is x plus 12. And here the part, x plus 4, times the whole thing, which is still x plus 4. So they get a little uglier, but so far they've been okay. Let's distribute. We get x squared plus 12x. And on the right side, you got to foil it first is x squared. Just distribute the first one and then the second one. So x through that is x squared plus 4x. Then distribute the 4. That's 4x plus 16. So now we have x squared plus 12x equals x squared. This is 8x plus 16. If we subtract x squared, look what happens. The x squareds are gone. So now I have 12x equals 8x plus 16. Subtract the 8x, and I get 4x equals 16. Divide off the 4, and x equals 4. All right, now here we have the part times the whole, x plus 2, equals the part, square root of 3, times the whole, which is the square root of 3 again. Distribute, we get x squared plus 2x and two radicals together, square roots, that gives me the square root of 9 or 3. So let's move it over by subtracting it, and I get x squared plus 2x minus 3 equals 0. So factor, get x and x. Factors of 3 are just 1 and 3. There aren't any others. So now how do we get a positive 2 from 1 and 3? Well, if 3 is positive and x is negative 1. And a negative 1 times a positive 3 gives me negative 3. So now either x minus 1 is equal to 0, or x, that looks like a plus, <laughs> x plus 3 equals 0. So add 1, x is equal to positive 1, subtract 3, 
x is negative 3. And again, x is by itself, represents a distance, so x can't be negative 3. All right, number 13. What'd they do wrong? Let's solve the problem first. So let's not even look at this yet. So again, we have the part 3 times the whole piece, which is 8 equal to the part 4 times the whole piece, and we don't know what dc is. Um, so we can call it x, so the whole thing is going to be x plus 4, and then we can solve for x then, that's 24, and this is 4x plus 16, subtract 16 from both sides, that's 8, divide off the 4, and x equals 2, or the arc CD equals 2. All right, and now if we look at what they did, all right, they have CD times DF. Oh, took, they took 4 times uh, part times part. They were doing it as if the vertex F was on the inside of the uh, circle. So that's what they did wrong. They applied the wrong formula. On this one, again, it's on the outside, so the part times the part. And they took LM equal to LN times LP. Now, this part this part here is correct, the part times the whole, but the LM isn't. They need to take the part LM times the whole piece LM. So this should be LM squared equals the part 7 times the whole piece 15, which they did that part right. That's 105. But... LM squared, to get rid of the square, you take, take the square root. So LM is going to have to be equal to the square root of 105. So take out your calculator and do the square root. And you get 10.2 approximately. So approximation symbol. Real life, the Cassini spacecraft conducted a series of missions in Saturn's orbit from 2004 to 2017. Three of Saturn's moons... Uh, Tethys, Calypso, and Telesto have nearly circular orbits of radius uh, 295,000 kilometers. Okay. And the diagram shows the positions of the moons and the spacecraft on one of Cassini's missions. Okay. The distance DB from Cassini uh, to Tethys, oh, find the distance uh, when uh, AD is tangent to the circular orbit. Okay, so this is your basic form here. We have, um, let's do this part, whoops, let's do yellow. Do this part right here. That part is 203,000. That's the part times the whole, again, 203,000. So that's 203,000 squared. That's supposed to equal the part uh, DC, which is 83,000, okay? times the whole piece, which we don't know this piece. So the whole piece should be x plus, oops, x plus 83,000. And that's your setup for your problem. So now we just do it. We have to take 203,000 uh, times itself, and we get a big number, 41209, followed by six zeros. Okay, and then we have 83,000x plus 83,000 squared, or 83,000 times 83,000. That's a really long number. Um, 6889 followed by six zeros. So let's subtract that over here. So 41,209,000,000. Six billion eight hundred eighty-nine million. We subtract those, we get thirty-four billion three hundred twenty million. Oops, equals eighty-three thousand x. Now divide it by eighty-three thousand, and we get four hundred and thirteen thousand four hundred and ninety three point nine seven five nine that's equal to x okay it doesn't say what to round it to i don't see so 
that's your x that's in kilometers uh, and x again remember is just from b to c so it wants us to find db the whole distance so we got to add 83,000 to that so plus 83,000 and we get 496,493.9759 kilometers. That should be the final answer for DB. Newgrange is a large tomb in Ireland consisting of a circular mound with a diameter of 250 feet. A 62 foot long passage leads toward the mound's center. Okay, find the perpendicular distance x from the end of the passage to either side of the mound. All right, so this, I um, want to point out, you have your vertex on the inside of the circle. So we have um, this part times this part is equal to that part times that part. So what we do is, first of all, x times x is x squared, and then we have... Um, the diameter is 250, so be very careful. So this part here should be 250 minus 62. And that gives us 188, and this part 62. So 188 times 62. So now we have x squared equals 11,656. And to get rid of the x squared, we take the square root of x Take the square root of that on your calculator, and you get 107.96 feet. That's just one of the x's, so 107.96 on each side. Okay. Now, if you want to take a mini assessment to see how you're doing, this is good for later on. Uh, you can uh, advance, fast forward. We can come back to this and do it later uh, in the week, or you can. Um, advance to the next uh, slide which has all the answers that I've already gone over. So I'm going to go ahead and do the mini assessment here. Pause it if you want to try it on your own. Let's see how you do. All right, here we go. Find the value of x. So again, the vertex is on the inside, so we take part times part and part times part, 4 times 9. So x squared is equal to 36. Take the square root. x is equal to 6. We're on the outside, so we take the part times the whole, 4 times 25, and the part x times the whole, x plus 3x is 4x. So that's 100 equals 4x squared. Divide off the 4, you get 25 equals x squared. Take the square root, x equals 5. All right, and number 3, find the value of x. Again, your vertex is on the outside. The part times the whole piece. The part times the whole piece. x plus 2x is 3x. 81 equals 3x squared. Divide off the 3. And you get um, x squared equal to 27. And now we take the square root of 27. And that is the same thing as square root of 9 times 3. Square root of 9 times the square root of 3, which is 3 square root of 3, or approximately 1.414. The circle represents the cross section of a pipe. Find the radius of the pipe. All right, again, our vertex is on the outside. Okay, so uh, you take the part, 6 times the whole piece. So it's 6 plus r plus r. That's the whole piece there. And that equals the part 12 times the other part 12. And I see I made a mistake here. The square root of 3 is uh, on number 3. The square root of 3 is 1.414. I forgot to multiply that uh, times 3, uh, which uh, should give you uh, the right answer. So the square root of 3 uh, times 3 is 5.19 or 5.2. And the square root of 3, some, something's not right there. That's what should be 1.7 something. What's the square root of 3? 1.732. All right, so something was very odd about that. Okay, so um, what do we have here? Uh, we have uh, inside here, this is 2r plus 6. And we got to distribute that 6 through here. So that's 12r plus 36 equals 
144. So let's subtract 36. And so we have 12R equals 108. Divide off the 12. And X equals 9. All right. So now we're done. That was your mini assessment. And here are the rest of your answers. So go ahead and pause it. Good job.